Trojan fans, if Jim Harbaugh decides to take the LA Chargers job, I have one question. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Holkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day, whether you're watching the show on YouTube or wherever you want to download your podcast. This show is free. I appreciate your support. I really want you to show your appreciation. If you're watching on YouTube, help the show. Become a subscriber. Smash that thumbs up button and hit that bell notification button so you don't miss an episode. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to get started. So here's my question. Who should coach Eric Henderson and coach Sean Nua tamper with first? If Jim Harbaugh decides to take the LA Chargers job, uh, it's going to open up another 30-day transfer window. And that means another batch of potential transfers or, you know, could be available out there from a team that actually contended for the national championship. Not only contended, but they won the national championship. And I know I shouldn't have to say it, but I will, just in case there's people out there who are, you know, hanging on every single word that I say, but I'm only joking when I say they should tamper with Mason Graham or with Michigan's roster. But look, if there's a chance that uh, Mason Graham becomes available in the transfer portal, coming home for a year, playing inside with Bear Alexander and wanting to be coached up by Eric Anderson. I mean, like Captain Picard used to say on Star Trek, make it so, right? (laughs) I still remember, look, I remember the summer of COVID and watching Mason Graham go through offensive line and defensive line workout drills. Uh, with giant skills, Chris Talamayavo. Um, it's it's big man, seven on seven stuff type of stuff. And if you're saying Chris Talamayavo, where do I know that name? Well, his son Viani played for USC, and he's now the Stanford Cardinal offensive line coach. Yeah, that Talamayavo. Anyways, um, Helton staff at the time didn't give you know didn't get too serious about Mason until it was too late in the recruiting process. And by that time, he was all set to go to Michigan. And let's be honest, the Wolverines football program was in much more stable condition than USC's at the time. The former Servite prospect, uh, he's turned into one of the top defensive line players in the country. So that was definitely a big, huge miss uh, on USC's part, letting you know local stud get away. And just to kind of put an exclamation point on that, he, he ended up winning a defensive MVP during the postseason. He's a really good player. Uh, And here's here's, here's the thing. And why, you know, just above his physical talent, you know, he knows what it takes to win at the highest level. So that's something that, you know, USC should consider if it happens, you know, if Mason Graham ever jumps into the transfer portal. But, you know, that's something that... um, I think Graham should consider also before the NFL draft comes around. I mean, think about it. You're already really good, right? You have a national championship ring, and you have a chance to come home, get coached up by one of the best in the industry, someone who's coached at the NFL level, someone who's coached Aaron Donald, who's probably just got done coaching the NFL's defensive rookie of the year, Kobe Turner. I mean, come home, <laughs> collect a nice NIL, NIL paycheck, and make USC's defense great again. And again, the best part, and the, the the benefit for Mason Graham personally, is he gets to start learning from Eric Henderson and Coach Sean Nua. I get it. You know, winning at Michigan is fun, and I, you know he's probably formed that bond with with, with his teammates. But how much fun would it be 
um, if he, you know, as a Trojan beating his former teammates, Michigan, in the Big House in 2024. I know, awkward, but hey, just throwing that out there. I know Alabama is dealing with an exodus of, what, 9, 10, 11 players since Nick Saban left. And, you know, let's keep in mind, let's look at it from, you know, Michigan's point of view, from Mason Graham's um, maze and blue eyes. Michigan played a bunch of games last year without Jim Harbaugh on the sideline. You know, he cheated. Um he, he got caught cheating, I guess, because everybody does this. But the brotherhood bond that that team had last year, that might be unbreakable. I was really strong. So, again, Mason is the type of impact player that USC needs out of the transfer portal. He's not in the transfer portal, but if he was, he is the no doubt about it type of impact player that USC could use. There isn't going to be any question about would he fit USC's locker room culture. Right? He's he's not a problem child. So, hey, you know, I, look, I know I'm way over my skis right now because Jim Harbaugh is still the head coach at Michigan and Mason Graham is still a Michigan Wolverine. I've heard no rumor that he would consider jumping into the transfer portal, but I have to think it's a possibility. But again, I'm looking out, I'm looking ahead. And just in case Coach Dad Pants wants to coach in the NFL again, um, I'm thinking, you know, let's let's look at some other situations, some other scenarios out there. So let's say Jim does get the head coaching job in the NFL. This is something that Mason's going to have to consider. Now, ironically, Pete Carroll, of all people, <laughs> he can mess this whole wish list scenario up for me. Because he's throwing his name into the uh, hopper for that head for that LA Chargers head coaching job. I mean, how much would that suck if Pete Carroll messed up everything and got the job? Look, I think Pete needs to take one on the chin, take one for the team, right? Let Jim Harbaugh have that job. Let him beat Pete. Pete, take the loss, just for old time's sake, for good old SC. Let it happen. Former Seattle Seahawks, Seahawks head coach, uh, Pete Carroll, is making a behind-the-scenes push for consideration for the Bolts' next head coach job, according to Pro Football Talk's Mike Florio. And just to kind of go over Pete's uh, NFL resume, he led the Seahawks to 130, 137 wins, 89 losses, and one tie. Uh, he had five NFC West titles, two NFC championships, and a Super Bowl title. And he was literally one really questionable play call away from at the goal line for a second Super Bowl win. So he's Seattle's winningest coach in their history. And I have two words of two, th uh, two things of advice that I'd like to offer Pete Carroll. Number one, the Chargers are a terrible organization. They're cheap. They've, they've been cheap since they were down in San Diego. Pete, if you want to come back to Southern California, take my advice. Take a corner office at USC. Let's just do what's best for USC in any way possible. And what's best for USC is letting Jim Harbaugh have that job with the LA Chargers, and you be the guy to tamper with Mason Graham on behalf of USC. Now, according to the NFL Network's Mike Garofalo, the Chargers and Jim Harbaugh are in striking distance of a deal to make him the next head coach. So it seems like uh, Pete getting that job might be a long shot, and that actually works in USC's benefit. Because USC needs big guys in the trenches. Michigan has a few. They were really good last year. And USC could use that, use one, you know, that one, one and done type of guy. And Mason Graham could probably be, I think he would be that guy at the top of my wish list. So, Pete, take a step back. You don't want that job. Take the corner office at USC, get in that rocking chair, 
wave hello, you know, hello to people, give some advice, let Jim go back to the NFL. Help out USC. Again, this is my wish list. If Jim Harbaugh takes the job, Michigan is going to have a transfer portal window open for 30 days. Does Mason Graham jump in? I don't know. I hope he does. And I hope USC can get him. The NFL regular season is up. We're into the playoffs. We're two games away from the Super Bowl. NFC Championship, AFC Championship. But there's still time for you to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. It's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. And the FanDuel app is really easy to use, and they've got so many different ways to bet. They've got same-game parlays. You can find new ways to bet in their Explore tab, and you can make a parlay in their Parlay Hub. They've got a bunch of different ways to make money. So visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on and make your first bet an easy score. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts on Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. We're going to keep uh, we're going to keep going on with recruiting. Um, the show. We've been doing it all week. Might as well stay on the same road because the USC coaching staff is on the road. Juju Lewis, uh, he made it official. He's planning to enroll in college in January of 2025. So a year from now, Juju will be enrolling in college. Now, he's also going to be taking a trip to Alabama. Um, He's gonna, he wants to see what Kalen DeVore is doing down there in Tuscaloosa. Juju is still firmly committed to USC. Let's be honest, though. He's keeping his options open. He's taking visits. I think everybody anticipated that happening. Even if he was still part of the 2026 class, he was going to be taking visits. He would just have to wait a little bit longer. Now that he's a member of the 2025 class, he can start taking official visits. So, imagine if Juju does decommit and picks Alabama over USC and Georgia. I mean, is that haha funny or is that haha not very funny? I don't know. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. Um, and I'm throwing it out there because Kalen DeBoer, Alabama's new head coach, he has a really good track record working with quarterbacks. Just kind of throwing that out there for people. Now, there aren't any, <coughs> excuse me, the, um, the 2024 on three uh, five-star list just came out. It was um, updated and it was released. There aren't any USC commits on that list at the moment. And because the February signing period, signing day is just around the corner, a couple weeks away. I'm not sure USC is going to have any in this recruiting cycle or this bidding cycle. Um, you decide which how you want to call it. Anyways, so USC doesn't have any. However, Ohio State ended up with three. Julian Sayan, the transfer from Alabama, helped out a little bit. Uh, Georgia has three. Dylan Rayola helped out, but in the wrong way. Georgia could have had four. Uh, Florida believe it or not. They're coming off a dumpster fire of a season, and they are literally officially under NCAA investigation. They even have two five stars. Texas pulled in three, including Brandon Baker from Modern Day. I mean, Colorado, Missouri, Texas Tech, they each have one five star. So does Nebraska, courtesy of Georgia. Uh, Dylan Riola finally chose a school. We'll see if he's still there after spring camp. I'm kidding. I'm sure he will, at least for this season. Um, but right now, Lincoln Riley, he's on the road recruiting. And I'm going to go over some of his, uh, where he's 
where he is stopped off in just a second here. But if recruiting class rankings do matter, and to a small extent they do, you know where I stand on this. I'm not going to go over that again. Uh, then Lincoln Riley, Coach Riley, he needs to start picking them up and putting them down and start winning some of these one-on-one battles. It's time to get to work, Coach Riley. I'm being sarcastic for some of you out there who aren't sure. Get to know me. Figure out my style already. Anyways, that's why you need to be an everyday listener. And you get some really good information, too. Anyways, even with a uh, USC's weak high school name, image, likeness game, uh, USC's 11 wins with Alex Grinch returning, that was still good enough to catapult uh, the Trojans into a top 10 recruiting class in 2023. Now, it took a minute for them to get there because uh, Deuce Robinson took a couple of minutes to finally choose the USC to put him over the top to get him into that top 10 level. Now, if we're being honest, USC would actually fall out of the top 10 uh, list from 2023 because Malachi Nelson bailed bailed out and jumped over to Boise. So, again, you always got to look at things down the road. Not at the moment, because that's when these recruiting classes really matter. What did they do? What was the return on the investment two, three years down the road? That's how you determine if it was a good recruiting bidding class. So did USC's name image likeness program that was geared towards the high school recruit affect their ability to close deals? Yes. However, not nearly as much as Alex Grinch's defense and USC's seven regular season wins in 2024, excuse me, 2023, that affected their 2024 recruiting class. Anyways, so yes, NIL plays a role. Uh, I think winning plays a much larger role as far as USC is concerned. So here's where Lincoln Riley has been lately on the road recruiting trying to get back to the 2023 level of um, recruiting rankings nationally. He stopped off in Rhode Island recently to see a wide receiver. His name is David Diroth Rodriguez. He's um, he's a 5'11", 155 pounds, so slot guy. Michigan and Penn State will want him as well. He stopped off at Baltimore City College, Baltimore, Maryland, And he was there to see a couple of wide receivers, uh, Vernon Allen and Romero Ison. So we know that he's always looking to upgrade uh, his skill position, guys. He also got down to the state of Georgia, which is a good thing. A lot of talent down there. Uh, He stopped off at Lee County High School in Leesburg, Georgia. 2025 running back, Usmani Kroma, uh, who, by the way, he holds an offer from the Trojan. He also holds offers from Florida State, Georgia, and Alabama. So that's going to be the main competition there. While in the Peach State, he also stopped off at Green County High School in Greensboro, Georgia. And he found a really big guy that he likes. He already holds a USC offer. Excuse me. Six foot three, 320 pounds, four star defensive lineman. Kevin Wynn, and he also has offers from Georgia, Alabama, Auburn, just to name a few. He was uh, he stopped off at Calvary Day School in Savannah, Georgia. Again, three-star defensive lineman Walter Mathis got an offer from USC, six foot two, two hundred seventy pounds. Real quick, I mentioned the name Calvary uh, since then. Since I brought it up, one of my uh, everyday listeners uh, let, hit me up on YouTube in the comments section, and he said, "Oh, by the way, uh, Manny Wright is coaching at Calvary Chapel in Santa Ana. I think that's fantastic. So, fight on, Coach Manny Wright. Looking forward to you developing and churning out some future Trojans there. Now, we're going to see if uh, Eric Henderson, uh, if his hiring is going to have an effect." 
So not just Lincoln Riley on the road recruiting. The entire USC coaching staff is out there recruiting right now. And you got to check this out. Savannah Christian Preparatory School. 2025, five-star defensive lineman. He holds an offer from SC already. Elijah Griffin, six foot four, 270 pounds. He's the number three overall national recruit and the number one defensive lineman in the state of Georgia. Here's what you need. Here's all you need to know about Elijah Griffin. He picked up his first offer while he was still in middle school. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that practice, but it happens. And he made an instant impact on the varsity squad uh, once he got to um, high school at uh, Christian Prep. As a freshman in 2021, he recorded 69 tackles, eight tackles for a loss, five quarterback hurries, and three and a half sacks. And then um, he followed that up at the National Combine. He ran a 40 40 yard dash in 5.1 seconds. He has a 35 inch vertical leap. In 2022, as a sophomore in high school, he racked up 82 tackles, 30 of them were TFLs, 14 and a half sacks, and 14 hurries, which allowed him to be named Max Prex to the Max Preps sophomore All-American team. So as I mentioned, USC has no five stars in their 2024 class. How many can they get in 2025? where at the start of the recruiting season, the coaching staff was out on the road. They're hitting them up. I gave you some names. I'm going to continue to update this list as we go along, and uh, we'll see what happens. So stay tuned. Make Locked on USC your first listen every day, and I'll keep you updated. Earlier in the week, I talked about Marquise Gallegos and his love for his family, as well as for, you know, his Mexican culture, for his, her- for his her- heritage. As you can see, uh, third segment of the show, we're going to talk about another favorite from the class of 2024, the favorite recruit of the week. Like I said, I did Marquise Gallegos earlier in the week. Last week, uh, we started this, uh, this segment with Carlon Jones. Now, we're going to talk about and I want to stay on uh, the family tangent. Uh, we're, and and I, the reason why is the word love. Justin Ta, Justin Taua knew, I think I said that right, said his heart was always at USC, even though he committed to Stanford first. And one thing I noticed about Justin when I started looking at some of his interviews, he loves to use the word love. And there, look. There's nothing wrong with love and passion when it comes to football, right? You need to. You need to have both of those characteristics if you want to become a really good football player. If you've watched uh, the Polynesian High School All-Star Bowl uh, this past weekend, you saw what the future could look like at USC at the offensive tackle position. Justin is a six foot six, 270-pound uh tackle with really long arms and he mo- he's got some really fluid hips for a guy his size. He moves really well on his feet. And he is also incredibly intelligent. I mean, you have to be. He was accepted to enroll at Stanford. Stanford will not give you a committable offer unless they know you can meet their entrance requirements. That's all you need to know. But despite committing to Stanford last summer, um, Justin, he continued to stay in con- uh, in contact and communicated with USC, and he actually took an unofficial visit uh, when USC just kicked Stanford's butt at the Coliseum last year. It was I mean it was it was USC's second best game of the season. Obviously, the Holiday Bowl being their best, um, and that was the first of multiple visits that he started to take in the fall, including an official visit. This is what he told um, Scott Schrader at We Are SC. Quote, my heart was always for USC. When I committed to Stanford, I felt like I needed to commit at the time just just to be with everyone else who was committing. And I thought about it. I started to grow towards USC a lot more. 
USC was originally where I wanted to go, end quote. And then there was also the family aspect of his final decision, the Trojan family. And in his case, his own mom and dad. He said, my dad can't really travel planes much. So going to USC makes it easier for him. It's just an hour drive from home. Remember, Justin plays at a, he's from Huntington Beach, California. So again, what's not to like about a young man who wants to stay closer to home so his parents can watch him play? I know the argument always comes up, you know, let the young man make his own decision. If, and if he wants to go somewhere else, go out of state, let him. Sure. Well, he doesn't want it. So in this case, take advantage of, you know, his love for his family and wanting to stay close to home. Now, while Vianney Talamayavo is, is considered a really young and up-and-comer in the coaching ranks, uh, in fact, one day I hope he's coaching the offensive line at USC, Josh Henson uh, has a, is pretty good himself, and he's well-established. He's got a pretty good rep as well. This is what uh, Justin had to say about Coach Henson. I love Coach Henson. I early enrolled over there, so I've been going up to his office every day after school, watching film with him, and just having a good time, talking about football, and sometimes we talk about fishing, and he taught me about fly fishing. I have so much fun right now, and I'm loving it all there, end quote. So I've heard the word love, what, four times now? I talked about Justin's measurables and his frame and his athleticism. When he talked about which side of the offensive line he prefers, uh, he said left tackle is his preference. Quote, I think preferably left tackle. They just like my smarts. I mentioned Stanford. Uh, I have good football smarts, and I just love football. That's five. Uh, now I'm just trying to learn the playbook so I can get on the field as quickly as possible. End quote. Now, before he sees any playing time, and Justin knows this, he needs to get bigger. He needs to get stronger. He needs to, you know, get acclimated to the college football game. And I think he knows that Elijah Page has a couple of years on him as well. But Benny Wiley has already made an impression. Surely, quote, the first day, it took a little bit to get adjusted. But Coach Wiley, I love him. That's six. He always he's always on you trying to get you better. And then outside the weight room, he's like another father. So he has like two personalities, which I love. Seven. Right now, we're just lifting in the morning from like 6 a.m. until 7.40 a.m. And then after that, we have school. And then we come in and and then we come in after and do some rehab. Coach, Coach Wiley wants us to be so tired that we don't lift in the afternoon and just do rehab, end quote. I know there's some concern that that Wiley might not be the uh, the right guy for the job, but remember, strength and conditioning coaches they do what they're told. So I don't know who Coach Wiley was deferring to last year or the first two years, but Lincoln Riley, Danton Land, Coach Henson, those are the guys he has to def to defer to this year. And from what I understand, all three want bigger, stronger. So, Josh Henson and Benny Wiley, lots of love from just uh, from Justin, and he has a good relationship with Coach Riley too. This is what he had to say. Coach Riley had a pretty big impact on me coming to USC. I love him, eight, and he's a really good person. We're getting ready for the Big Ten, where all the standards are higher, and he's been one of the best offensive coaches for a lot of years. This is what drives Justin. This is his why. Um, and you can tell he's looking through the windshield. <coughs> he's not looking in the rear view mirror. Um, just like Carlon Jones and Marquise Gallegos. Justin is also a big picture guy. This is what he said. What drives me is I just want to have a very comfortable life after I'm done with playing football. I don't want to be living paycheck to paycheck anymore. That's what motivates me. And I also want to buy my mom and dad a nice home. The degree at USC uh, will take me way past my college football career or even just football in general. That's why I was really big on education in my recruitment. I'll be majoring in engineering too. 
I might as well try to take a hard engineering major. So not only does he want to compete at the highest level on the football field at USC, he also wants to compete in the classroom in a really difficult field, engineering. I mean, what's not to love about this guy? He's not the highest rated guy, but tell me, this is not a winner and a guy who will contribute down the road for USC. I love him. He loves USC. What's not to love? All right. I'll be back with another episode of Locked on USC tomorrow. We do five times a week. I'm going to have some more new topics. We're going to talk about recruiting. I'll keep you updated on that. And uh, we'll see what else pops up. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.